This show is brought to you by DF Studios Limited. Whether you are a business owner or entrepreneur, DF Studios will guide and assist you on the best ways to promote your brand digitally, in addition to creating visitor and customer generating content like blogs, social media posts, videos, and even podcasts like this one you're listening to right now. Visit dfstudiosltd.com or hit up info at dfstudiosltd.com for more info. So I know I'm no J.K. Rowling, no Anne Rice, okay, so I admit, let me introduce myself. My name is Verena Budasing, I'm a sci fantasy author from Trinidad and Tobago. So my friend Mikkel, Mikkel Khan, he's also a sci fantasy author. He called me up a day and said, you know what, we really do have some amazing conversations on phone. Well, the phone calls, not on phone, you know what I mean, guys. Mm-hmm. And... I was like, yeah, we do, because we will talk for hours. And then Mech was telling me, we should do a podcast, right? Correct. And talk about these things, share yeah. information, share the knowledge, we're not greedy. Yeah, and all that people want to know. Yeah. So let them know. Let and them all listen. Mech, it was really nice that, to find up next like sci fantasy author in your country. Correct. Yeah. Because when I started, it had nobody. Yeah. Nobody wanted to publish. Nobody, they had ideas, but they didn't want to do. It. They didn't want to execute. You were the first person I know who actually talked to talk, yeah, walked the walk, and made it happen. I didn't just you weren't a you weren't a, an an asshole. No, <laughs> <laughs> one who asks for <laughs> advice and don't do anything, anything with about, it. Yeah. So kudos to you, V. Well, you did good. Yeah. Yes. So, well, Meg, tell us, tell, you know, let's read, let's tell them about our book and our work. So, I'll let you go first. All right. <laughs> so, I am Mikkel Khan. I am a science fantasy and science fiction author. Um, I'm best known for the Enixa series. So, the Enixa is an all encompassing, powerful entity that was created at the beginning of time. And the story follows several families who want to take control of it and get back to the prime galaxy, the first galaxy before the Big Bang, called yeah. Alpha Centaurus. So we follow those families who go out of their way to connive, stab, and betray <laughs> each other to make it happen. And the real question of the Enixa is, is it all worth it at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. It's for the reader to decide based on the events that happen. Nice. You know, you you telling me that story, and I could see it. I could see it in the movies. Nice. But, you know, so well, my, I am a sci fantasy author. The Circle Armor is my first sci fi. It was a sci fantasy book. Mm-hmm. Before I wrote two children's books, um, The Adventures of Anna and Her Magic Dogs. But sci fantasy is really what I like to write. You know, I think I really love sci fi and sci fantasy. So I, dis- I took a risk. Mm-hmm. And I finally got the courage and confidence to like say, yeah, I'm going to do this. <laughs> so, well, the Circle Armor is loosely based on Atlantis and is basically based 13,000 years ago when um, some space explorers crash landed on Earth and they created a settlement. But then it had like this war and they created this invisible shield. But... Uh, in the end, they realized there were a lot of lies about this world and the war, and these three protagonists were forced to find courage and strength to save their world. So, I guess we have some similar paths. Definitely. Yeah. So, V, mm. we both came from a film background. Yes. We produce films, we act in films. You know, we're, we're, we came from that because we um, knew about it from before, right? When it came to becoming an author, for me, it was a situation of I had so much I wanted to tell the world and share the world, but I could not wait until we created a film for it. Yeah. And some of the films that, or some of the stories I conceive in my head, 
short even short films I wanted them to be. I I did not have the backing or didn't didn't have the budget at the time to make it happen. But give me a weekend or give me a month, and I can give you a manuscript for that that readers would appreciate and they would buy it. They want to get more of it, and I could produce that. I could produce maybe even twelve books in a year for them, mm. as opposed to a movie that's taken three to five years to put something out, and even then it's okay. Yeah. It's good enough. I just want people to see my ideas. I want them to read my stories and share my experiences and come along for the ride with me. So that's what I feel. That's what why I felt empowered to become an author, especially in this. And I have to admit to um, it was very similar for me as well because um, the Circle of Armor initially was a screenplay um, because of my limitations budget-wise, as usual. It's always mm-hmm. about the money in this capitalist world. <laughs> um, and then, you know, we, we have to admit we have some limitations um, our local film industry, you know, and this is something... The Circle Armor, it's a global story, but there's representations and elements of the Caribbean. And I can, I find locally, we tend to like, no, I don't mean to stray on any topic, but locally, we tend to like favor things as 100% local, you know? So I didn't feel I would have gotten the support, you know? And I'm saying Circle Armor is not local, because when you read it, for example, there's a party scene, you see like Moko Jombies, a blue devil because I'm Caribbean so you see my flavor you know that the scene is a Caribbean scene you know the characters there's one character that speaks very Trini so it's but it's a global story mm-hmm. but anyways that um I knew I knew I would have I suppose see the problems of this being made into a TV series or film locally so that I said I have this story to tell and I want it to be told I want it to be heard and that's when I decided to turn it into a novel, which was very different from screenplay, as you know. So it was a learning curve. I had to like teach myself um, how to transfer this story into this new medium. And I think that is why it took long, you know, because it was a learning curve. But yeah, um, what inspired, I don't think I, I honestly, I don't think like, yeah, I wanted to be an author all my life. I'm not going to lie and say, yeah, you know, I was wanted to be an author since I was seven years old. No. But I have to admit, I know that I'm grown up adulting and <laughs> being mm. a mom and all that. Adulting. I think I, um, I was always a storyteller. I started to realize that because I would, like, I have a younger sister and I was always telling her stories to get her motivated and a message to do things. Oh, you really... If you do your homework, you know what happened. Uh-huh. I know trainees can tell a story, right? Correct. <laughs> the drama, the the you know, the the suspense. <laughs> so I think yes, I was always a storyteller, but I have learned to to um you know to transform that into a different medium, which was books. And yeah, so that's my story, that's how I became an author. Yeah, I love it. And the thing is, you're so correct with the support um, because people locally will want um, like the steel pan, the steel pans are turning to Tobago, or like the, the I mean, food place are turning out to Tobago. I read that book yeah. in a heartbeat. But those are the things that are really supported. I was actually told by one of the big branch um, booksellers that those books do not sell locally. Yeah. But I couldn't help it because that is what I was drawn to. I could have wrote, written romance books under pen name, probably been making hundreds of thousands of right? US. Is, I was so tempted to um, talk about this one is a, is a Viking in the 21st yes. century and he's a real man for the woman and the woman is a plain Jane and she yeah. become a she become a, a, a shutter you know yeah, after yeah, that so I could, look those things could come up and I think but it, it was never my the appeal to me my yeah. appeal has always been discovery experience yeah. immersion exploration things that will challenge the and and, and really mesmerize the human mind mm-hmm. 
and I could not pick between fantasy because I have limitations there. Yeah. Science fiction, or oh, I can't have hocus pocus in that. Screw it. Yeah. Science fantasy. When exactly. I was younger, I used to. I actually used to write books when I was younger and do comics. Mm-hmm. I literally thought I invented a genre. Yeah. I literally called the damn thing mystic. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, um, oh shit, I have something good here. Never mind. I didn't know about the dunes of the world and well, I knew Star Wars. I thought Star Wars was more sci-fi, yeah. but um, I've always been drawn where I would take all elements of the the amazing, the, the, the um, wonder, and put it together. And then I learned about science fantasy. What yeah. I did learn was that science fantasy does not sell well as books. Yeah. Now my books are selling pretty good, and what people, what the gold mine is, is the audiobooks. Yeah. Once you do audiobooks, whew, I will wait for when the circle armor goes on audiobooks. Yes, yeah, so well, you book. know that's why when you told me about this podcast, mm-hmm. I think I. I saw the importance of it because once I became an author, a lot of people have been messaging me and saying congratulations. And with that, I also got a surge of questions as to how did you do this? How did you self publish? What about the ISBN number? Blah, blah, blah. And you know, and I think this is a perfect platform for us to get the information out there. So we can give you all our tips with regards to like, plot outlines, character development, uh, scenes, uh, you know, yeah. and as you said, make the business aspect. Yeah, this, yeah, there's a lot to learn, there's a lot to uncover, there's a lot we're still learning, and this podcast is not just us telling you, telling you, the, the, the listener, yeah. it's about us learning things, coming back and speaking about it, and even you telling us things, Yeah, because we have polls, we'll have polls, we'll have... We'll be taking on messages or on podcasts. Or give a comment. Yeah. Leave your comments, yeah. what you want to know. About, yeah. and we'll build it. we build it from there. Because sure. so. we're not stingy. Listen, I knew how difficult it was to get information when I wanted to start this book. Mm-hmm. And the only two people who was very generous with their information was Mikkel and Janelle Fronten. Yes. And, you know, I'm ready to give back. Yes. And this podcast is my way of sharing any little knowledge I have. And giving it back to you so you all leave your comments whatever you all want to know anything book related let us know exactly so my inspiration with this entire thing especially in the self-publishing world had to come from when i actually would change somebody's life or give them some joy in their life yeah um some of my readers are older and some of them actually had terminal illnesses. Um, some of them have passed on, you know, God bless their souls. But not before they messaged me and reached out to me and said, uh, Mikhail, thank you so much for this story. Yeah. I'm going in and out because I, I, I have Alzheimer's and or my they were told they will answer for their, their spouse and say they have Alzheimer's and they just loved your books and they love how 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 imaginative it is. Yeah. And you just made their day. You just made them, uh, and they stay in the hospital. You just made them feel good it even like for a few moments. Too. Yes, it was an escape yeah. for them. So the more I started to see that, is the more I realized I was on the right track. And I mean, I got that, and I got my share of two stars, one stars. I got my four and five stars, too, but the one stars and two stars were like, not really my genre, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. or didn't really like this book because I don't really read this genre or maybe there was even a case where I had bad editing yeah. they said great story but please we love a god fix yeah. your editing that's when yeah. I learned to make sure I do my editing properly but just the good and the bad the ability to make somebody feel something like the one star told me to throw my books in, a, in, the, in the fire oh god no, that was I am happy. <laughs> yeah. Because if I could make you step out your whole self <laughs> and write, you see you, throw your box in the fire. Hey, shit, 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 shit. Yeah. I don't like it. Thank you. Yeah. Because the worst thing I want is you read my book and I was like, I know how I feel. Yeah. Feel something. 
Yeah, but you know what? That is a quality I do like about you. Mm-hmm. Like you take everything as a learning experience and not as like, okay, I want to stop writing. You have to. You, have you really, to you really is. digest that information, and you and I, I realize that everyone can absorb information and use it to like fix what needs to be fixed or corrected. They actually just absorb it and let it take over and just finish. But you you have to learn how to take criticism in a good way. Mm-hmm. Because it was made, you know, the person probably had a point and, you know, I'm sure you learned from that, yeah. made your adjustment and you have came a long way, yeah. Yeah. you my, know. My latest books do not have the issues that the first books had. Yeah. And those who just want to complain will complain. Yeah. Granted, it, it's that's good because... At least my book doesn't look like, and this is no shade to anybody who only have five stars down the line with their books. Yeah. But at least it does not look like the reviews or the accolades are fake. Yeah, exactly. It's real. real. And I have no problem showing you the good, the bad, and the ugly, ugly with it. And it's a growing process and I'm I'm getting less ugly and more all right, yeah. good, and great from there. So I... I feel different things inspire me. I can't just say it's one thing, but I do feel that, you know, I have a message to share. And I feel every story is basically a message. The circle armor is a message of hope. Because I am an underdog um, in every aspect. And I really do, like, I wish I could tell the 10-year-old me you got this. You will make yeah. it one day. Yeah. You don't listen to those people, yeah. those bullies and those people or your family members who say, you are not going to make it. I had a family member who said for CXD, let her do home ec. Why are you telling her to do history for? No hope. You know, and I I felt as if I want to see those little boys and girls up there. Uh, I want to like tell those little boys and girls, I don't listen to those people who say you can't. You listen to your heart and your spirit and say, and once you say, I can do this, you can't do this. Because the power of believing in yourself is magical. And that's no fantasy. I ain't telling you no fantasy or side fantasy stuff here. This is real thing. Once you believe, that is our magic system. You have no idea. Because I am the least likely person to succeed. I'm telling you. And I felt as if I always just believed in myself and whatever I put my mind to, I can make it happen. And I guess I wanted to share that to the world because I knew how it felt in many scenarios, like not having hope, nobody believing in, believing in you, not having that backing or support system or your cheerleaders. It could be really hard. And I felt like, I don't ever want a little girl or a little boy feel the way I felt, you know? And how could I get that message out? And I felt through my stories. And I think that is what really inspired me. I never really thought about it until this question was written in the board. I probably knew it all along, but I guess it's clearer now. So, yes, it's it's like a message of hope and belief. And I feel as more and more I feel it's my purpose in life to bring people to their awareness of their capabilities and their power in life and why they were placed on this earth for. Because we were here, you know, by chance. Life is such a beautiful thing. And we cannot sit here and be sad and think about what we do have or or think about our disadvantages and be like, I can't do this, you know? We really need to learn to, to, to deal the cards we were dealt with and play the best hand you can. Because you're here on earth and you're ready to beat the odds. So now it's time for you to learn to use your magic and just show your magical ways to the world. I agree so yeah. much and that's so powerful. Mm-hmm. And... I would say don't ever tell yourself that you were the least likely to succeed. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure Maybe, you yeah. might have a backstory <laughs> there, but um, I mean, everybody has their challenges and their issues they have to deal with and they have to go yeah. through. 
but I have seen people who were in the worst of the worst positions and they're doing things like working in Silicon Valley and, and buying their family houses and things like that because they're just pure determination, yeah. pure, you know, drive to do that. And one thing I have to tell you about that relative who said, not history for and home ec. Yeah. Um, your book, The Circle Armor, yeah. is a historical fictional take exactly. on the past. So yeah. it served you well. Yeah. Especially for a book that is going to be, what, is it a trilogy, a series? It is a trilogy. Right. Which can potentially be a huge thing. Yeah. So the history came in handy. So people could just haul their ass. Yeah, exactly. Is what I'll say about that. But I think that person said that because I'm dyslexic. Like, so, you know, they really discover that late in life. Huh? So maybe she thought, like, I couldn't read. But, you know, it's like a way of... Ask yeah. me when I when I learned how to read. <laughs> Ask me when I actually was able to to, to think words. I I yeah. thought I was hopeless. I literally thought, for life me, I would never be able. I thought I was, what's the word is again? Um, illiterate. Yeah. I thought because things that were easy for other people to do, and I and I will always bring this up, and this could be a whole new topic. Mm-hmm. But things that were easy for people in my grade to do, I couldn't do. I couldn't spell certain things. I couldn't. I couldn't following words it didn't make sense to me yeah i know we're writing books exactly so anybody says we can't is it those are people to not take advice from because they're too short vision what is will not always ever be very true you have so much to change in life yeah and you know it's not like you just have to believe alone you see when you start to believe in yourself Mm -hmm. it triggers like your brain to do the work Mm-hmm. Because as soon as you said, nah, I can't do this, you wouldn't pick up the pen and start writing. Or you wouldn't, like, you know, make the dress if you want to be a seamstress. Be like, nah, I can't sew. But as soon as you say, yeah, I could sew this dress, you'll actually, it will trigger your brain to pick up that cloth, measure someone. You know, it, it's like a trigger, that belief. It, it triggers you to do the work. Because I'm not just saying you have to believe, because you have to do the work too, you know? You have to push it. But the believing is what triggers you to do the work. And I, I saw that in myself, you know? Well, one thing I learned from copywriting is that in order to be um, great, you have to be good. Yeah. In order to be good, you have to be okay. And in order to be okay, you have to be bad. Yeah. You can't start nothing without being bad. Exactly. So screw it up as much as you can. So every day, I would try to write a little bit if i don't have the time if i'm on the road um i would stop put something in my notepad yeah. i'll write on my phone I do that and well. i would have notes and i would actually have something more than what i had the day before one thing i always promise myself to do and it works very well for me is i try to write at least 500 words a day it's very possible yeah that can fit on a page or two and it doesn't even need to be good it's just a stream of consciousness of me writing down something a scene an idea something like that Mm -hmm. because it's a muscle it's a mental muscle writing where um brain to brain to hand brain to type and you get better and better as it comes so you sometimes 500 words takes me 10 minutes or less to do Mm -hmm. but i will tell myself okay good if i could do more i'll do more if i can't i can't but i definitely will do that um as you lie down in bed you could write that and you could do that you wake up in the morning you could do that before everybody else is awake you find your rhythm that works for you and yeah so how about you that's that's similar to me as well because and this all came in with the whole belief system Mm -hmm. because i was like i have to write this book and i have a daughter and like I have many roles I play, you know, I, um, I'm i also a public relations director for my husband's company. I have to cook food, take care of three dogs. So, I mean, you do get tired with, you know, life and things happen. But you see when you believe in yourself so much so, you just have this desire, like no matter what, I'm going to get this shit done. You, that's why I say you have to believe in yourself because that is your trigger. And I was like, I need to write. 
So I would tell myself I want to give my, especially when it came to crunch time for writing the circle armor, I, I gave myself very realistic deadlines that I did not want to pass because I know it will never, you have to give yourself some deadlines else it just, mm-hmm. it'll be a book you're writing forever. Mm-hmm. So I knew I had, so I told myself I'll write five hours a day. It don't have to be at any specific time. Whenever I get the five hours, even if I get 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, I would write. And I sync my work to my iPhone. So if I'm in the car waiting for a daughter to pick up from school in traffic, I write. But there are some scenes you need pure silence and to really concentrate on those scenes I took the extra effort and I would wake up at like 2 o'clock in the morning when everybody's yes. sleeping yes. make my cup of tea mm-hmm. and write so that's what I'm saying like sometimes fine any time was very difficult for me as a mom and taking care of a home but the desire to to put this story out there became so strong that every obstacle was just a challenge to help me become better with my time management. So if you know you want to do something, you would do it. Mm-hmm. That's when you know you're passionate about something because everything will just be a little delay, but you're going to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Look how you did, even with all the obstacles you had, yeah. you still got it done. Exactly. Because so you would know I had a lot of personal, you know, scenarios with my mom, mm-hmm. you know, I had a little surgery. Yeah. Like, you know, so you, yeah, the deadline probably <laughs> extended a, a few weeks, but, but it still hit. Yeah, right? exactly. You didn't be like when you didn't be like when that when that happened when when I could. Yeah. No, you're like okay, well this major event happened, so let's make the deadline two months from now. Mm-hmm. You literally made it real. Yes, and therefore you moved accordingly, and it's okay to move it across, but make it real. Exactly. Don't make it arbitrary, like. When I do this, and maybe if this yeah. happens, when you be specific, when the time and date, even though you you have passed it, mm-hmm. it is it becomes more realistic. Yes. You have to be specific with your goals, just like your story, for your story and your world world building to be realistic to your audience. You need to be specific with your politics, your economy, your social structure, and as the same thing with your goals, you have to be very specific. Because it'll become real. And when it becomes real in your head, it becomes real in reality. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so, and I've seen that in you and Janelle as well, because you all are very busy. I mean, you have your production company, your studio, you have staff, mm-hmm. but you know, you have to find time, you know, and you have your family commitments as well. And it's similar to Janelle, you know. And so, I mean, yeah, you, you just find a way to find that time. Yeah. And you get rewarded for it. Yeah. Now, the rewards won't always come right away. No. But you build that momentum. I believe in momentum over motivation. Mm-hmm. Motivation is good for spurning moments. And motivation is good for when you're in the movement. Yeah. But the momentum is what really helps. It keeps you going over and over. And it builds. It builds upon each- itself. So yeah. I said it takes me 10 minutes to do the 500 words. Before it might have taken half, uh, like a half an hour because it's like, oh, what to write, yeah. what to say, how to do that. But no, it comes. And with that momentum that you give yourself small steps to make a long, longer journey, that works. And yeah. that's clearly working for both of us. I know there was some times too when I felt like um, life just happened and I just, I mean, sometimes we have to know when to like let life happen too because there were a lot of scenarios that happened to me and I was just so fixated in getting those five hours done like it bothered me like I didn't get my five hours done today but then I just said you know let me let it go and I just so I have to admit there are times when you have to know yourself when to just let go too and be a little lenient because the time when I felt like I was upset that I didn't get my five hours done today I didn't get my five hours done, but when I took any moment, the moments with the situation that happened, it really helped my story. Like, you know, I'm just going to use a random, you know, a scenario, you know, for example, the situation with, you know, my mom, you know, I'm working on this new book and I felt like it kept me back from writing. And then I was like, I'm so, was heartbroken. And I just took in that moment, but that is what will help bring a realistic scenario to my world too. So it's kind of like a 
you know you really have to know it's like a give and take and you really have to know when to give in and sometimes we'll just to leave it alone and i think you will know you'll have that feeling and just trust your instinct yeah you know what i love about it mm-hmm. even when we're going on this journey we feel like it's alone we actually have a encouraging and forgiving fan base yes that would actually be like it's okay you have your down times we can wait on the next one at least you want to understand it yeah um and that really came for me where i um was putting out my material putting my putting out my work putting my work out there to some of it to be read for free people liked it they it, it started to grow an audience from that mm-hmm. and organically and over time it started to grow and the more encouragement i got was the more um help it, and it gave me to continue with what i was doing yeah so in terms of you know high final motivation or that momentum to happen your audience really does help and i have a lot of people who ask me so that's my problem yeah i we we'll put something out there and nobody reads it nobody sees it nobody knows what to do and i give everybody the same advice when it comes to that go where they are where are they they probably where you are you like this right you like what what you're writing right i yeah. hope so because that's why i didn't do the, the romance because as much as as entertainers romances i ain't exactly running down the, the vikings and, yeah, the, yeah. and the warrior and the whatnot and the, yeah. i mean the twilight movies are pretty good yeah i mean i read i, I watch movies and read the books but yeah. i would i like science fiction i like science fantasy where are they they're on facebook groups yeah you go by them they're on forums they're on reddit they're on different places you go there you you make acquaintances you talk about what you love and those that you're really linked with you but you know what make i know we like running low on time mm-hmm. but uh, that's what i want you to help me i mean you can help those our audience as well mm-hmm. like how to build a fan base maybe that can be a topic you know because i have to admit i need some guidance as to how to build a loyal fan base and you have gave some points where we can probably discuss that in a later podcast of course for yeah. sure for sure so i got a lot of questions about you know writing my book yeah. and i realized since i launched my book there's so many people who actually want to write mm-hmm. and you know the first question i got was like you know why i decided to take the self-publishing route and i was like you know i actually know a lot of writers personally who did that you for example mm-hmm. one so why are you why, well why you decide i know why i took that route for me i just felt I was more in control of my creative, you know, world. I will be able to retain a lot of the money, which is a good factor, right? Yeah, it helps. It. That was a massive factor for me, and I think I can. For me, the biggest plus was control, mm-hmm. especially when it came to this first novel, sci-fi novel, because I wanted control regards to. The way it look, my book cover, the way it was presented, the way it was marketing. I'm going to plan to market, you know, release date. I don't want you to change my characters too much, you know. And then, of course, like, we have to admit, if you want to get your book published, it takes sometimes years for someone to pick yes. up your manuscript, right? Yes, yes, yeah. definitely it does. Um, I would have to say that when I first started writing and uh, figuring out everything with the publishing system, the business, yeah. I was actually looking at the two different parts. So I was looking at um, traditional publishing yeah. with a um, publisher. They would handle everything. And the self-publishing was actually lasting on my mind initially because I just wanted to write. I yeah. just wanted to be able to just put out books and be able to, you know, continue there and put out my ideas yes i spoke to a few people and the people who actually got published and the funny thing is that they went the traditional publishing route and even though they were happy their book was out there yes they weren't really happy with what came out of it so 
Well, you actually went further and dig into it because yes. I didn't even touch base with some of these people. I was like, well, that is really encouraging to know as well. Yeah. So yeah. colloquial terms, mm-hmm. um, they would want to take it out yeah. because they don't think that the um, international audience will understand what you're saying there. Um, they want to change the cover of your book based on what they believe will work on the outside. Yes. Not necessarily if it will or not. Eh? And it could you could get your entire idea just gets lost in process and you get something that is just generic, safe. And yes, the tropes are there, but you could always follow the tropes by yourself. Yeah. Um, so I saw that and I was like, the real straw for me was, yes, I'm writing, but then they leave you to do the marketing yourself. So I'm like, so what's the point? Exactly. You're yeah. going to have to market any way you put yeah. it. So why not do it? Like you rightfully said, why not do it where I am getting mostly royalties for it? That's a plus. And why not just learn the process? So that way, I never have to wait years for somebody to come and tell me, okay, we accept you now. Or yeah. write like this and you can do it. Exactly. I could write a book in a weekend and put that up on... And you have done that. Us. Yeah. Because I talk into this man, he's like, just on a verena, I just uploading up a, a book here on Amazon. I was like, all right. And that's yeah. the thing. Amazon has changed the playing field for mm-hmm. publishing. They made it so easy for self-publishing, right? So there's no excuse. Mm-hmm. But as you said, that we do have to take some time to really strategize our marketing because that will make the difference. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it definitely does. Um, you could put a book out there and hope the right people see it. That would have worked back in 2010, 2011, but it wouldn't work now because I believe the statistics are um, at least a thousand books are released on Amazon every day. Yeah. And people tend to go what they they go with what they know. So, for example, in our genre, fantasy and science fiction. Uh, right now, guess who the top uh, books are in that? Just take a guess, a wild guess. Well, I would just take like J.K. Rowling, Game of Thrones. J.K. Rowling. Yeah. The Harry Potter series is yeah. the top, has been number one, number three spots since they came out. Well, not mm. since they came out, but since they got popular. And um, that's thousands of books being sold every day. So that is encouraging to know that, hey, People who haven't bought your books yet, they haven't seen, they haven't written, they haven't read it yet. They will still come back and you know Just check it out. So your audience is, I don't want to say infinite, yeah, but it's like a, almost a never-ending stream of people who are just coming and coming. But at the same time, people go on what they know, what they're told about. So you don't have to spend a hundred thousand dollars. There are ways to organically market, and you're taking your time rather than your money to do it. But that's like an entirely different um, topic, conversation. We should have our next, yeah. You know, let's... Well, that leads me to, you know, I've also been asked, like, what's the pros and cons for Mm -hmm. self-publishers, you know? And I think for me, it was the marketing. Marketing. You know, to me, that was the biggest hurdle. And it still is because I'm learning. And the thing is, you can write a book have it on Amazon, but how are you going to let people know your work is out there? You mm-hmm. know, like what going to, yeah, word of mouth, you know, is a thing. But, you know, I think in this day of the social media world, um, things, people are just flooded with information and we really need to find a way to say, you know, bring the spotlight on to you and your work you know mm-hmm. to see like so i think that for me was and it is challenging but it also pushed me to discover new and creative ways for example tiktok and i think well i know tiktok is a platform that we need to take advantage of especially when it comes to like book talk mm-hmm. like i realized when i put hashtag book talk like the for you page of my work will show up a lot and actually the hashtag have been working for me so that's my little marketing tip that helped me overcome my marketing problem with self-publishing because i realize i keep putting my hashtag science fantasy and if you go science fantasy 
on um, TikTok, you'll see my will come up first. So That's if good. you continue to use those mm-hmm. hashtags and really be consistent, it works. It works. Well, that's good. Yeah. So but, that was my little marketing is mm-hmm. and still is, but I'm learning and it's actually pushing me to make the problem not a problem anymore. So I have a question I mean. for you. Yeah. Um, that what are we? I wouldn't even say that's a con of yeah. self-publishing because, like I said before. They're going to expect you to market your book. Otherwise, yeah. it's just going to sit there. All they're going to do is distribute it for you. And as we know, putting your book up on Amazon and the different online stores, mm-hmm. it's not that difficult once you know exactly what to do. Yeah. So self-publishing has the pro of like, you can put make a book in a weekend, put it out there, and you could get selling once you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I would say the cons are, if you see it as a con, yeah. you have to learn everything and you have to make sure you have quality out there because you have people that will hear that you sell, publish a book and they're like, oh, okay. It's yeah. not always a claim to fame. It's a kind of, well, I expect that to be utter crap yeah, because yeah. I see a lot of utter crap You get that a lot. There. That's true. Yeah. So Because yeah, you, see their, like you see their facial expression change. Oh, self so Yes. They, they feel like you endorse that and yeah. who are you to endorse that. And that comes with a brand. A brand will help with the pro of that. And that comes over time. Now, But I think mm-hmm. we should change that because now that someone tells me to self-publish their book, I'll be like, wow, you actually took the time and energy. That's a whole different level of strategizing. Yeah. But it was nice. I think this was really great. I mean, guys, you know, forgive us if we stray or if we had any hiccups. Listen, we are virgins when it comes to podcasts, yeah? Yes. So we trying it out, but it was great talking and chatting. It felt really natural having a conversation with my friend. I felt I was talking to you on your phone when we were recording it. Yes, we have to record. <laughs> I, I feel like the audio quality will be even better. A lot better, yeah. So the and I could go will... back on my call and I could say, get the information, which is good. Because yes. a lot of time we used to talk and be like, what Nick said, boy? I should have write that you down. And we weren't recording it. No, At least no, this I can. way we yeah. have it. And the, the listeners are going to benefit from it. And guys, if you all take anything away from this, is to try, create, put it out there. Get your criticism. That makes sense, of course. Yeah. And keep doing it. Remember, momentum is the key. I and agree. you're only going to get that if you start yep. and continue. And don't be afraid to start. Just start. The important thing is just the hardest part is starting, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, as Mikhail said, you know, just you're going to fail a lot more times before you're going to fail a lot and you're going to fall a lot before you get to go when you get it you're going to get it big because it, it you need to fall you need to fail to get it it's a failure is an important it's very important yeah to the to, to be successful and I'm, I'm as an adult i'm starting to see that and i wish they taught us that more in school because you're so ridiculed when we got things wrong that we as an adult when we get things wrong we just want to give up Mm-hmm. But I'm teaching my daughter, that is okay, girl. That is all part of it. This is what's going to make you even better. And I was like, this is good. So you have to remember that failure is all part of the success journey. And I don't want you all to just wait for it to happen. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the writing. Enjoy the process. Don't wait for the destination. Okay, I know we're running out of time, but mind your mind with Mikel and Verena. This was good. Yeah. So guys, thanks so much for listening to Mind Your Mind. Uh, we produce this at Mind of Khan Studios uh, on Warren Street. <laughs> and you can find the podcast on Anchor, Spotify, iTunes, and Google Play. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I think I'll share some on my TikTok. Some behind the scenes and yeah. So you can look for me you can find me on tiktok marina buddha sing and yeah still getting used to this guys forgive me no problem it's all raw it's all raw. real yeah. it's all happening and more to come we love this take care guys comment let me know what you yes. all want to know make your comments yeah. yes